everyone, welcome to my video. My name is Joey. Uh, I'm, today I'm going to show you how I go about editing my photos. I'll kind of explain things on the way. Uh, I'm going to assume that you know how to import. I'm going to assume that you know the basic functionalities of Lightroom. Um, and if you don't really notice, if, if you notice this interface here where you can adjust the temperature and it has the little number by there, it's because I shoot in RAW. And that's a question I get a lot from a lot of people. So. I strictly shoot in RAW, I never shoot in JPEG, so if you're just starting out, if you want to really, really get the full functionality of Lightroom, I encourage you to shoot in RAW. So let's just go ahead and get started in this video. I want to keep it under 5 minutes, I'll do my best. I can't promise anything right now as, uh, as the first video, because it is more of an introductory video right now. So I'm going to adjust the temperature in this photo. Uh, this, is a, this photo is of a picture of my friend running down the hallway. Um, with my 50mm 1.8. Uh, 1 60th, 1 60th of a second, and then ISO 4000. Um, it was very dimly lit in this hallway, so I had to crank up the ISO. So I, what I want to do first is I want to, let's see, I'll just do, raise the exposure here. This is always a good option. Always, you kind of want to underexpose your images because if you underexpose your images, that's all uh, data. Whereas if you overexpose an image, say like this is your image, all this, this is not data. White is not data. Anything colored or black, that's all data that you can be manipulated. So keep that in mind whenever you're shooting. So let's get started with this. Uh, I got the exposure. I'm going to bump that up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and bump the contrast up because I just like a little bit of contrast. Raw really, uh, raw is like an uncompressed version of JPEG, so you can really manipulate it, but that means that contrasts are very non existing, really. So you're gonna have to go ahead and add that in post-processing at this point you know what I'm doing right now so I'm gonna turn down the highlights yeah I'm gonna keep the highlights down um, let's see I'm gonna turn down the blacks just a little bit because I like to give the blacks just a little darker presence um, let's see I'll turn up the clarity just a tiny bit and that's it for this tab so I'm done with the basic tab so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the tone curve this is very very important this 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 curve here can single-handedly change your image, change colors, change everything. That's it's really complicated at first, but once you master it, it's not that hard. I'm not a master at it yet, but I'm planning on you know learning a lot. So what I basically do with the tone curve, I like to put three points right in the middle. Boom, boom, boom. So you have all you just have a straight line right now. And then what I really like to do is to go ahead and turn up the uh, it's called crushing the blacks so you just go ahead and make it like this you click and hold and then just drag it over to the left and that's called crushing the blacks so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna you know mess around with this just a little tiny bit there's not really much to do in this I kind of like the image as it is yeah I mean that looks pretty good I kind of like that okay so now we're gonna move on to the uh, let's see hue saturation uh, and luminance tab so this is really huge. I this is probably one of my favorite tabs. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and desaturate every color. Actually, no, let's keep orange in there. Uh, desaturate yellow. See that took a huge chunk of it out. Greens. Uh, I'm gonna keep blue. Uh, let's see. Actually, let's not keep blue. Yeah, take out blue. Everything. Okay, cool. So now let's. What I really like to do for these kind of images is to bump up the luminance in the blues some in the oranges actually no keep the oranges down the yellows is where it's gonna come out in there we go so it's already looking good I really like this this is looking great so far okay so let's see take down the luminance in the orange just a tiny bit give it a little bit more saturation I'm gonna change the hue so the hue basically changes the colors of certain I guess registered colors of the camera so as you can see the orange I can make it red or I can make it yellowish green uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make it more yellow so I'm gonna go ahead and put it around 16 let's see saturation uh, I like where that's at I like the desaturation of this actually I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit like right there cool and the luminance tab uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep everything there I really like how this is turning out so far 
Uh, so let's see, that's it for the hue, saturation, and luminance. I'm going to go ahead and go to the split toning. Now, the split toning is basically uh, controlling the shadows and then the highlights of what tone they'll be. So like, if I, oh yeah, that's really nice actually. So if I really like this blue kind of shading effect that I have going on here, I can go ahead and, you know, adjust the colors and everything, you know, for the uh, shadows. And the highlights is the same way. I can control most of the highlights. Mo this image is, you know, mainly highlights, so I can control more of it. Um, so let's see. There, you know, you get the idea. I'll be going over more in depth of the all of these tabs uh, as time goes on. I just want to get a, a very, you know, basic introductory video. Um, let's see. I really like the blue split toning in this, so I'm going to keep that. Uh, the detail. This is huge too. A lot of people ask me how I get such sharp photos, and it's actually not very hard. I use I don't use any third party anything. I just use Lightroom like religiously. So I'm gonna go ahead and I use this the amount. I just sharpen it just a tiny bit because I'm already at 4,000 ISO and you can see some grain in there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the masking up to about 30 or so, and then I always turn up the uh, noise reduction luminance to about 20. And you can see it's looking pretty pretty good here, pretty sharp you know from afar at least so then yeah that sounds there it looks pretty good okay now I'll go ahead and go into lens correction this is huge too if you're using a lens uh, most likely it ha you know it has to be profile corrected I mean most of the time I don't but in this case you get a lot of vignetting especially at 1.8 aperture and the 50 millimeter uh, this is the Canon lens mind you so oh yeah I mean you can just see the nine day difference there oh that looks so good so I'm going to go ahead and keep the profile correction on there. I really like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it there. Um, I usually just keep it on the basic and then I just click this and then I like to remove the chromatic aberration. That's uh, it's sometimes useful, not really in this case. Um, I like that there, so I'll just keep that there. And then effects. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of positive vignetting. I, that's usually what I call it. <laughs> Um, it kind of, it, instead of like a black vignette, I'm going to go ahead and add a white one. So positive is white, and then negative is black. So that's how that is. Pretty simple, easy to understand. Okay, now don't you don't really need to worry about camera calibration. I don't tend to mess with it a whole lot. It just, that's kind of weird looking. It's kind of neat though. You know, I kind of don't mind that, but I like the orange in his arms. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that. Um, I don't really mess with this a whole lot. Um, you don't really need to either. I mean, unless you want to, you can really play with the colors. Um, the hues really, like, they're they're dramatically changed through the uh, blue primary, green primary, red primary. And I don't usually mess with the shadow and uh, shadow tint and everything. So that's really about it. So, as you can see, we took this photo, the one on the left here, and turned it into this photo on the right here. I really think that's a huge difference. So I'll show you one more time. So the one on the left is, you know, pretty basic. It's not bad. I, I like it. It turned out pretty cool, you know, out of camera. But I really, really had a vision in mind of what I wanted this to look like. And um, I just made it happen. Um, you know, simple things. You saw me do this really fast. It's really simple. Um, you can easily do it, you know, figure it out for yourself. Uh, one huge thing I've just recently learned, though, is the luminance tab. I mean, I, I knew about it, but it's really useful. I never really realized how useful it is. Um, you know, a lot of photographers on Instagram, I would, you know, I'm, I'm going to use that as an example. A lot of them have like really overexposed images, but they can still somehow maintain the color, you know, certain colors like orange, for example. And this is 90% of how they do it. Sometimes they overexpose the image, you know, to begin with. And, you know, if they somehow overexpose it correctly, they'll get the, you know, right image and just barely have to edit it. However, if you're you know taking a photo like this where you know it's very dim light you're gonna have to you know, use Lightroom and squeeze it out of there and use the luminance so that's really about it um, if you guys want to see anything else please let me know in the comment section I'm really open to suggestions I really want to know what you guys want to see um, I really started this channel to help everybody else you know just to kind of give them a little bit of you know 101 if you will and I just wanted to, you know, share my knowledge and everything. So if you have any suggestions, if you have, you know, any constructive criticism, excuse me, 
uh, please let me know. Uh, let me know what I could do better. I'm going to try to keep it five minute videos. Um, you know, I'm going to try to push for five minutes. You know, if it goes over just a little bit, I'm sure a lot of you won't mind ten minutes. I hope so. Um, as long as I'm going at a faster pace or, you know, something like that. So, yeah. So, all right, that concludes the video. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe and really comment. That would really, really help. All right, guys. See